Hello, welcome to part 3 of the lesson on vector addition and subtraction. I'm assuming you've seen and understood parts 1 and 2. In particular, I'm assuming you know how to add and subtract vectors by scale diagrams. In this part, we're going to take a look at how we can add vectors that are perpendicular, that means the directions are at 90 degrees, using calculations. And we'll be using Pythagoras' theorem, and the tangent of an angle and the inverse tangent. Now, if your maths is a bit shaky, I'm going to spend the first part of the lesson going over the basic maths we're going to use. You'll find it useful to have a pen, paper and calculator to hand. You'll be able to try some of the exercises for yourself. At some points I'll suggest you pause and do something for yourself. At the end of the lesson I will mention how we can calculate the resultant of vectors that are at any angle at all. But the focus of the lesson is how to deal with vectors that are perpendicular. OK, let's start with what I hope is some revision. Pythagoras' theorem. Right angle triangle, long side is called the hypotenuse, one opposite the 90 degrees. And one way of writing Pythagoras' theorem is this equation. A, B and C are the lengths of the sides. The square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares on the other two sides. It's easier to write the equation than it is to say that. If you want to calculate the length of the hypotenuse, take the square root of both sides of that equation and you end up with this. Sometimes you know the hypotenuse and one of the sides and you want the other side. So you could use that or of course that. If you want to pause the video to inspect those formula, make sure you understand where they come from, you can do that. Here's an exercise for you. Can you find the value of C on that diagram? Simple as that. Now pause the video, try this for yourself. And I hope you got something like this. C is equal to the square root of 6 squared plus 8 squared works out to be the square root of 100, which is 10 centimetres. It's worked out a nice whole number. Usually it comes out to be something with decimal places, but in this case I've chosen the values for simplicity. And if you've seen right angle triangles and Pythagoras before, you can probably recognise this as a 3, 4, 5 triangle. That means the ratio of the sides are 3 units to 4 units to 5 units. I've just doubled the 3, 4, 5 to get 6, 8, 10. And that can be helpful in some problems. It can save you working out the calculation. OK, let's move on to the tangent of an angle. Here's a right angle triangle. I've marked one of the angles, theta. That's a Greek letter often used for angles. And the angle theta is formed by the hypotenuse and another side. and um, We call the other side the adjacent side to theta. Adjacent and hypotenuse form the angle. The third side is referred to as the opposite side to theta. It kind of faces it. Of course if I have picked the top angle then that's formed by the hypotenuse and the vertical line. And now the vertical side is called the adjacent side for theta. And the base is now the opposite side for theta. The tangent of an angle is simply the opposite over the adjacent length. So here's the picture here. Look at theta. The opposite is A, the adjacent is B. The tangent of theta is A over B, opposite over adjacent. And for shorthand, we write tan theta equals A over B. I hope you're familiar with sine, cosine and tangent. This is tangent. We're not going to be using sine and cosine here. OK, now I want you to do a little example, a little practice. And to do this, you need to make sure your calculator is set to work in degrees, not radians. Angles can be measured in two different units, degrees or radians. Now you may not know what a radian is, it doesn't matter, but you should know how to switch your calculator into degrees mode. 
So it's expecting angles in degrees and tells you angles in degrees. Might have to get the manual out to do that. Here's a triangle. It's a 60 degree duct triangle here. And I've taken a ruler and I've measured the base and I've measured the height. What I want you to do is work out the tangent of the angle using the numbers and work it out on your calculator, find out what 1060 degrees is using your calculator. So if you want to pause and do that now. And 1060 is trivial, it's 17.3 over 10, it's nice and easy, it's 1.73. If you type 1060 into your calculator, you should get 1.73205 and so on. There's a small difference because I'm only measuring to one decimal place. There's some small rounding error. So you should be able to use your calculator to work out the tangent. If your calculator was in radian mode, you wouldn't get the right answer, by the way. Can you also, while we're here, work out the tangent of 30 degrees in the same way from the diagram and using your calculator? What do you think the tangent of 30 is? Pause now. and for 30 degrees it's a top angle the opposite will be 10 the adjacent 17.3 so 10 30 is 10 over 17.3 it's 0.578 and if you do it on your calculator it'll be 0 0.57735 there's a small rounding error difference here isn't there that's because the distances have only been measured to one decimal place if it have made this 17.32 and I've got better agreement Now we're going to do the reverse of finding the tangent. Supposing we know the tangent but want to find out how big the angle is. We call this the inverse tangent. And there are some symbols we use for inverse tangent. You'll see tan with a superscript minus one, tan minus one, you'd say that. Sometimes it's called arctan. And sometimes on computers, spreadsheets and computer languages use a function called ATAN, means the same thing. So here's a triangle. I hope you can see immediately what the tangent of the angle is, the tangent of theta. The problem is, how big is theta? How many degrees is theta? This is what we're going to find out. Let's show you how. First of all, let's write down what the tangent is. Tan theta is obviously 20 over 10, it's 2. We want to find theta. Let's rewrite this with theta as a subject. Theta equals something. And what we write is this. Theta equals 10 minus 1, 2. Or we could write theta equals arctan 2. And what that means is theta is the angle which has a tangent of 2. So when you write down theta is 10 minus 1, 2, it means theta is the angle which has a tangent of 2. Now please look at the format of that. 10 to the minus 1 is all one thing, you write it together. And then the actual value of the tangent comes afterwards. People write all sorts of strange things. I've seen students write absolute nonsense. Don't you do it. Theta equals 10 minus 1 and then the value of the tangent. That's what you write down. Or arctan. But 10 minus 1 is the most common. To find out the value, you've got to use calculator, unless you're a genius. And you will have a tan minus 1 or arctan key on your calculator. It's usually something like second function tan. So you press a second function key, then the tan key. That will be marked on your calculator. And if you do this, you need to try this for yourself. You should get 63.4. If you type into your calculator, sh um, second function tan 2. It should churn out 63.4 degrees. You may want to pause the video now and check that for yourself. Here's one for you to try. I've drawn a triangle. Can you find the value of theta? Pause the video. Do this for yourself. OK, let's go through this. I've put the hypotenuse in, it's actually unnecessary, it was to just make you think which values you're going to use. The tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent, it's 15 over 12.5, that's 1.2. 
theta is 10 minus 1, 1.2. Theta is the angle that has a tangent of 1.2. That's what it means. So you do 10 minus 1, 1 1.2 on your calculator, and you should get 50.2 degrees. We could have written that down a bit more compactly in one go. We could have written down, if you're writing this in an exam, say, you could just write down theta is 10 minus 1 in brackets 15 over 12.5. Do it all in one go. So let's come to actually using all of this and adding two vectors. These vectors have got angle between them of 90 degrees, they're perpendicular. Some people call them orthogonal. It's a nice word, orthogonal at 90 degrees. The orthogonal has other meanings as well. Let's do this. The question is, two forces act on an object as shown. Find the magnitude and bearing of the resultant. The bearing is an angle measured from north, going in a clockwise direction from north. Now, pause the video. See if you can sort this out for yourself before I tell you the answer. Pause now. Let's go through this. There are two, there are different drawings we could do. Let's just go back one. Our vectors are 100 newtons west, 38 newtons south, A and B as shown. I've got to redraw the vectors to do the addition. I could redraw them like this, a red tip touching the yellow tail and the white arrow gives a resultant. Or I could draw them like this, with the yellow tip touching the red tail. And again, the white arrow gives the same resultant. Or I could join the tails together, which is rather nice because that's the same as what the diagram shows. In that case, I complete the parallelogram and go along the diagonal from the join tails to the opposite corner. In fact, the, the parallelogram is a rectangle in this case, because the angle is 90 degrees. So it's a simple rectangle, and the resultant is the diagonal of the rectangle. And it doesn't matter which of these we choose, we need to find the length of the resultant, the length of the white, white, white line, and the angle that it makes to north, which is up there. I'm going to use the parallelogram, the rectangle. The top and bottom are both 100 newtons long, just think of them as lengths. The sides are 38 newtons long, again, just think of them as lengths. So we've just got to use Pythagoras to work out the length of the resultant and the inverse tangent to work out that angle to start with. Let's do it. The magnitude of the resultant is the length of that line using Pythagoras. It's the square root of 38 squared plus 100 squared. It comes to 107 newtons. Look at the angle. Theta is 10 minus 1. Well, it's the opposite, which is 100, over the adjacent, which is 38. So it's 10 minus 1, 100 over 38. It comes to 69 degrees. We've done it. To complete it, let's work out the bearing properly. There, there's our original two forces. The resultant of those two forces is 107 newton force. The bearing is measured from north. They so start at the north and go clockwise. That's 180 degrees to get south and another 69 degrees. So it's 249 degrees in total. That's the bearing. That's all there is to it. Finally, let me point out that if you're good at maths, you can actually calculate the resultant of vectors even if it's not 90 degrees. It's a little bit more complicated. I'll quickly say something about it. Here's a sort of triangle you might use to add two vectors. B, A, the white is the resultant. Let's label the sides of the triangle A, small letter, B, small letter, C, small letter. And the angles, let's label them with capital letters. The angle opposite to A is capital A. The angle opposite to side B is capital B. And the angle opposite to side C is capital C. That's a convention we use in mathematics. And we want to work out the length of C and the direction of it. Well, 
If you are doing trigonometry, you probably know the cosine rule. C squared is A squared plus B squared, like Pythagoras, but minus 2AB cos C. So we can work out the length of the resultant. Can we work out the angle? Yes, we can. We know C now. We'll already have known angle capital C. And we've got this relation. C over sine C is the same as A over sine A, which is the same as B over sine B. So you can work out the angles. And that's it. You now know how to add vectors that are perpendicular. I'm not going to go over subtracting them because that's pretty obvious if you've seen the previous parts of the lesson. Thank you for watching.